What's up guys, Justin here with the cgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a tool for filling in holes in your meshes inside a blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so first off, I didn't even realize this tool was a thing. Um, I actually found out about it from inside of the Blender Secrets book. So you might've seen the Blender Secrets channel. He's got a ton of quick tutorials teaching you how to use Blender. He's also got a giant book about tips for Blender. So um, this is one of the things that's in there. There's like 1800 pages. I haven't even made it through all the way through yet, but um, this is a great resource for learning a ton of things about how to use Blender. So I will link to that in the notes down below if you are interested. But basically the way that this tool works is it takes a loop, right? So if I have a loop of vertices like this, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna click on one of them. Remember that you can tap the Alt key and click, and it's going to select a loop, but if you have a loop of vertices like this, what you can do in edit mode is you can do a control F and there's actually an option in here for grid fill. So what that's gonna do is that's actually going to fill in this surface using a grid. And so obviously this is a massive time saver over me coming in here and modeling out that geometry manually. So um, you can also use this for more complex situations. Like let's say you have a hole in a sphere like this one. So then you can do the same thing on this one, right? Where you can select this vertex and then you can do an alt click Whoops, and you gotta make sure that you actually click on the vertex, not on the edge, but that's gonna select this loop. Well, if I do a control F in edit mode and I do a grid fill, that's gonna come in here and that's actually going to use a grid um, in order to fill this in. One of the cool things about this is notice how this is not flat, right? It actually maintained the curve of this object coming along this surface, meaning you have like a full complete sphere again. So um, again, for like patching holes and other things like that, this tool can be pretty, um, pretty helpful. And so let's say that we wanted to fill in the top of our sphere like this, right? So I wanna fill this in with geometry right here. Now you could tap the F key, but the problem with tapping the F key is that that's gonna bring in geometry that isn't quad based, right? So what that means is that means that this is just a singular face. Um, it's an ingon and it's not necessarily going to render out very well. It's gonna cause some issues. But if you come in here and select all of these into a control F and then you do a grid fill, notice what that's gonna do is that's actually going to generate a grid that follows along with this surface. And this is a great example because we can look at what this span and offset functions do. So basically what this does is this just changes the way that it's trying to make the surfaces in here, right? So notice how if I adjust the span, I'm going to get different fills, um, it's using different mathematical functions in order to figure this out. And so notice how you can adjust the way that geometry is created in here. And then you can also adjust the offset on this. And the offset is basically changing which vertex this considers to be the corner of the grid. So this is gonna work for some more complex shapes as well. So again, if I come in here and I just do an alt click and I select this loop, I can just do a control F and I can do a grid fill in here. And notice how right now it's using the grid fill to try to fill this in and it doesn't necessarily give us the best result. So what we can do is we can come in here and we can adjust this. And that span is going to allow us to adjust the way this is created. So we can get something fairly symmetrical by going to a value of four. So again, notice how we get a little forward out of this. So it's trying to kind of follow along with this. And so notice down here at the bottom, we're getting this kind of like weird lip um, so it's kind of like dropping this down and then moving it up, which isn't necessarily what we want. If you want to simplify that and remove that, you can just check the box for that simple blending. That's going to change the interpolation method that this uses in order to figure out where those vertices go. So when you do that, notice how this is just kind of moving this upward rather than outward, but you are also losing a little bit of the out of the middle here. So you're just going to have to kind of play around with this and see which geometry works the best for your situation. All right. So then one other thing to be aware of is your underlying geometry is going to affect your result. And what that means is if you look at this right now, I've got this shape that I've drawn and um, this edge is just like a singular edge, right? It's not divided at all. Well, I can select all of this and I can do a grid fill. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna give me a grid fill that basically runs along the surface like this, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just not giving me a whole lot of geometric detail. Now, what you could do though instead is you could tab in here and figure out how many vertices are on your edges here. So um, I toggled on my statistics in order to see that, but notice how I've got six vertices on this edge over here. 
I've got six vertices on the edge over here. Well, what I could do is I could select this and I could do a control R to subdivide it. And so I'm gonna give this four cuts, right? So we're just gonna select this, do a control R and then scroll our mouse button up until we get four cuts. That's gonna give me six vertices on the end as well. Well, now if I do an A and a control F and I do a grid fill, notice what I'm doing is I'm getting geometry along the inside as well. So if you need that additional geometric detail in here um, where this is kind of subdivided rather than being something where the edges just run straight across like this, adding some additional geometry can be really helpful. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the grid fill tool. I am planning on doing a few more videos highlighting some of the other cool stuff inside of the Blender Secrets book. So if you do want to check that out, I will link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.